21st, 2020 at 2.30 p.m. in the administration building. John Metz, Chairman. A special called meeting at the EMA Public Safety Committee will meet September the 11th, 2020 at 1 p.m. in the Hawkins County Commission Meeting Room, Hawkins County Courthouse. Dawson Fields, Chairman. I once met a woman who described her life this way. I was proud of my reputation and my position. I was known at the country club where I was an officer, known among the elite of the community, and known as a leader at my church. But I was unteachable. Although I was a leader, I wasn't in the Word. The one thing I did know was how to play church. Oh, I knew how to pretend. Things changed when she attended a Bible study and was pierced by three words, God is alive. She realized that she'd been living as if God was actually dead. Romans 8 says, If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Are you living as if God is alive? With Seeking Him, I'm Nancy DeMoss Wagamuth. The time is now 11.17. WMCH 1260. We're Radio the Old Fat. Attitude is everything. I'm Mitch Anthony with today's Daily Dose. The famed ancient Roman ruler and philosopher Marcus Aurelius once said, The art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. Many people get quite upset and lose their composure when things aren't going smoothly. They expect life to be all smiles, graceful steps moving in melodious rhythms. When it isn't, they are very unhappy. They want life to be a dance. Most lives resemble the wrestling match. Others want what we want. There is competition. The clock is ticking. People are watching. We get thrown. We get slammed. Sometimes we get pinned, but we get up and go at it again. It's important not to get caught up in the illusion that things going smoothly equals success, lest we begin to feel like a failure when things get rough. It can work just the opposite. Things can be too smooth, and it could be a sign we're not being challenged or trying hard enough. Or, as one person put it, if everything is going easy, you just may be going downhill. Mitch Anthony reminding you once again that life is whatever you make it. Mitch Anthony here to tell you about the R Extra Mile, a charity that uses your extra airline miles to help cancer patients get where they need to go. Serious illness takes a toll not only physically but financially as well with lost wages, chemotherapy, insurance deductibles, and travel costs. There is additional stress. The R Extra Mile is seeking donors of airline miles to help patients to find providers. You can help by contacting the rxtramile.org, R-X-T-R-A-M-I-L-E dot org. That's rxtramile.org, R-X-T-R-A-M-I-L-E dot org. Don't never stray from the old-fashioned way. Thanks for listening to the Old Fashioned Radio, WMCH. The time is now 11.20. This program is a pre-recorded program. So I wrote a song about a, a tortilla. Uh, actually, it's, it's more of a rap. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. You're listening to Laugh Again with Phil Calloway. Each and every day I awake and immediately take 101 things for granted. Like the fact that I woke up, many didn't. And that I woke up in a bed. The ceiling did not cave in on me in the middle of the night. Spiders did not descend. My wife did not put a pillow over my head to stop my snoring. 95% of people die in their beds, you know. I did not. I take a deep breath. Unaware of the miracle of such a simple act, then stagger to the bathroom, never doubting that water will be there. Clean water, warm water, coming from a tap. I take a few steps toward the kitchen. The dog is completely out of her mind to see me, but does not bite me, like dogs in bad dreams. Mine just hops in circles, drooling on me like a toddler. In the kitchen, the fridge lights up when I open it. The coffee pot gurgles when I touch a button, and the toaster pops up a slice of golden brown. We have a table and chairs there, a view, peanut butter. 
I sit, munching away, taking for granted the fact that I can taste, see, hear, talk, and touch. I put my iPad in my briefcase. In the driveway is a car, a bike to ride. I am blessed. How did I get to be among the chosen few whose wife wants to kiss me despite morning breath and whiskers? Not her whiskers, mine. How in the world was I singled out to spend the day engaged in meaningful work in an office free of armed guards, far from the threat of turmoil and war? Unbullied, overfed, appreciated. At night, as I leave the office to walk home, I stub my toe on a door jam. Let the whining begin. I hop around on one leg. Oh, oh, oh! I'm holding my injured foot and squealing. A concerned friend pops his head through my doorway and laughs. I'm the funny guy. I must be joking, right? I'm fine, I mutter. But the truth is, I'm not. A swollen toe is just one more ailment on a growing list called the perils of aging. Wrinkles on my neck. Hair in my ears. Too much natural gas. Outside, a bank of clouds moves in front of the sun, and the temperature dips. My new shoe is too tight. My pinky toe throbs with each stride. When I walk through the door, my wife senses within seconds how my day went. I mutter something about cold weather and sore toes and hard shoes. I limp to the table where a bowl of soup sits next to a sandwich, waiting for me. I lift my spoon to my lips. The flavors dance across my palate. My gaze falls on two badly needed reminders. A picture and a book. The picture is of a child dressed in rags, sporting a grin. My wife prays for Ronaldo before we eat. Thank you, God, that because of your goodness to us, Ronaldo will go to sleep with a full belly tonight and go to a good school tomorrow and learn a trade and read a Bible and hear about Jesus. My eyes drop to the book on the table, one I was too busy to read this morning. It's still open to the most Googled psalm in history, Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, God, for your promises, for your presence with me in the middle of my whining. Thanks for 101 things I take for granted each day. For delicious soup and a delightful wife who made it. For a dog who is hoping to sample it. And thank you, God, for nine good toes. Laugh Again exists to bring a message of hope and joy. Phoebe wrote to say, the coronavirus pandemic has been a time where I felt my panic attacks try to return. Your short, joy-filled videos have helped to place my feet back on the rock of my salvation and put joy back in its place, my heart. Thanks to all of our listeners and supporters for making Laugh Again possible every day. To donate, call 1-844-663-2424 or visit laughagain.us. Laugh Again, truth bringing laughter to life. WMCH, Churchill, Tennessee. My name is Reverend Alan Acott. You are listening to uh, WMCH Radio 1260 AM on your dial, the voice of the old-fashioned way here in Churchill, Tennessee. I would like to invite you to listen to Back to Calvary broadcast uh, each and every uh, Monday through Friday from 5 to 5.30. I preach from the authorized 1611 King James Bible. You may contact me at 704-964-4686 or 980-277-5382. You may email me at aaycoth at twc.com. God bless you. And keep on looking up. Jesus is coming soon. The Voice, AM 1260, WMCH, Churchill. WMCH, The Voice, the talk of Hawkins County, can be heard various ways. First, on your radio, 1260, and also on your smartphone, or by streaming on the internet, or by Ustream on the Roku on television. Go to WMCHradio.com, that's WMCHradio.com, to find out all the various ways WMCH can be heard. We are the Preacher's Station. 
Ministry on the phone. That's right. How would you like to have a ministry on the phone sitting in your home office or study and reach people on the radio? You can speak directly from your phone without leaving your house and give your sermon or your lesson or encouragement in a safe, convenient, comfortable, quick, easy, and an effective way on the radio. We have 15 and 30 minutes available for live services directly from your home. Beat the weather and beat the devil and get the word out. Give us a call at 357-5601. Again, that's 357-5601. The area code is 423. Give us a call. Neighbor, this is Brother Michael, once pastor of Pilgrim's Rest Baptist Church. I'd like to invite you to join us now in our new broadcast each Monday through Friday from 9.30 to 9.45 right here on WMCH. And uh, again, that's Monday through Friday from 9.30 to 9.45. May God bless you is my prayer. I'm First Lady Chrissy Haslam. It's heartbreaking when disasters impact families and communities. TEMA has a free smartphone app called Ready TN that provides current weather and road conditions, a checklist of emergency supplies, and information on how to be prepared for a disaster. Ready TN is available as a download for your iPhone or Android smartphone. So get the Ready TN app and let's be prepared in Tennessee. This message brought to you by the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, the Tennessee Association of Broadcasters, and this station. We have a job to do out here today. To be a winning team, you have to work like a winning team. My team depends on me. And my team is 50,000 strong. This is the action team. High school students and Major League Baseball players working together to train and inspire the next generation of volunteers. I'm LaTroy Hawkins. I'm Craig Kimbrell. And we're We're on the the team. team. The action team. Our team is the action team. Get in on the action at actionteam.org. Are you in? I'm a veteran of the United States Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, Marine Corps. I served with pride. I made a difference. Now I'm out, but I still have something to give. That's why I volunteer with With the the Tennessee Tennessee State Guard. That's the all-volunteer branch of the Tennessee Military Department. I drill one One weekend a month, and annual training is one weekend a year. I never leave the borders of Tennessee. Tennessee, so that allows me to protect my family and my home. And I can serve until I'm ready to retire. I'm part of something important again feeling the same camaraderie as when I served before. The Tennessee State Guard performs a Homeland Security mission along with the Tennessee National Guard and Air Guard. Do you still have something to give? You can be a part of this group too. Get back in uniform. Make a difference. Be a part of something special. Units are located all across this great state. Just go to tnsg.us for more information. Serve again and the Tennessee State Guard. The Voice, AM 1260, WMCH, Churchill. Greetings, radio listeners of WMCH. I'm Pastor Barry Rackley of the Rogersville Baptist Temple, Rogersville, Tennessee. I'm excited to announce that God's Definite Voice of Truth broadcast Monday through Friday, 4.30 to 4.45 p.m. Our purpose is to exalt the Savior, to expound the Scriptures, to encourage and exhort the saints, expose sin and Satan. WMCH, Church Hill, Tennessee. The time is now 11.30. Welcome WMCH listeners with Ron Gordon and the Community Talk Show. Please, if you have any interesting community service, business, or church and would like to be interviewed here on WMCH, give us a call at 357-5601 and set up an interview to share your information to the community. This is no cost. This is a free service to the community. And now Ron Gordon to the Community Talk Show. And thank you so much for being with us here on the Community Talk Show. Today I have with us Brother Caleb Kitzmiller. And Brother Caleb, it's so nice to have you today. Yeah, it's good to be here. It's an honor. Now, you, aren't you uh, 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 Johnny Gibson's grandson? Yeah, yeah, I am. I well. Am. I, uh, many people say, do you claim that? Well, I do. It's, it is. It's an honor uh, to be able to call him my papa, that God blessed me with papa like him. Uh, I was telling him the other night... Uh, they did a little celebration thing for him to honor his uh, 49 years of being a pastor. Wow. Yeah, 49 years at the same church. And uh, I told him, I said, it's it's just amazing how uh, I run into people all the time and never heard a word, bad word spoken against them anyways, no. at least to my face. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if uh, 
uh, people would tell me to my face, but it is. It's it's a blessing, and you know, you go to revivals and stuff, and I've looked around, and I, I, I mean, thousands of people there, and you think that person came through way of life. That person came, and it's just amazing how many lives that God's used him to touch. It's it is a blessing. And not only that, you uh, attend way of life, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm the associate pastor there. All righty, uh, so, well, great. So if Papa ever is sick or has something going on in the family, uh, I fill in for him. So. Yeah. Well, that yeah. is re- 49 years. I remember when he yeah. had the storefront there on yeah. Gravelly Road. And of course, y'all moved on out 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 farther on Gravelly Road. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, uh, we're Right, right where the old Gravelly Elementary, now it's Gravelly Baptist. We're mm-hmm. just right past there, up on the hill. The Church on the Hill is what they call it. Uh, so. Yeah, and it's a uh, Salvation Road. Is Salvation that right? Road. Yeah, I yeah. love that. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, I like that. It's 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 awesome when you tell people that they say Salvation Road, huh? So they can gain salvation on Salvation Road, ain't it? And if anybody listened, uh, what I think it was last year we had a uh, you, you guys had a revival here on the radio station, yeah. and uh, uh, you preached. Yeah. And and of course you know uh, Johnny did, and of course your mother was alive at that time, wasn't yeah. she? Yeah. She yeah. played the piano and, and stuff. Same, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It was a blessing. Somebody actually. I think it was around this time last mm-hmm. year. Uh, somebody shared a video on Facebook, a memory. Well, it was like a year ago, uh, a couple of days ago, a year ago then. Uh, and she was playing and singing and stuff. And I believe she was singing, uh, Just Any Day Now, Our Lord is Coming. And I thought, I mean, he's already came and got her, but thank yeah, God we yeah. can see her again. Uh, I mean, she's a blessing. sweet lady. I remember yeah. always smiling. Yeah, yeah. That was really yeah, sweet. she was. Now, uh, you're you're a homegrown, meaning you grew up in this area. What, in Kingsport? Or? Yeah, yeah, I grew up in Heights area. Mm-hmm. Uh, went to Sullivan South High School, played football. Go Rebels. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd slip that in there, but yeah. <laughs> You'd slip that in. <laughs> yeah, I played football uh, at South and then went and played a year of college football at mm-hmm. UVA Wise and uh, had some shoulder problems, so I uh, transferred back. So Now, you uh, you had not been married Real long. So when when uh, did you get yeah. married? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, she probably gets tired of me saying this, but I say I got married. She got marred. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, we got married May second, and uh, it it was different getting married with the pandemic and all that stuff going on. Um, so it just this year you got married? Yeah, wow. yeah, just a couple of months ago. So right, still in the newlywed stage, as people say. So. Uh, yeah. Some people say, well, how far you never get married? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, where did you meet her at? Uh, at church, actually. Well, yeah. It's it's a crazy story. I'll try to tell it as quick as I can. But uh, she is seven years younger than I am. Mm-hmm. And, and I tell people, I say, it not, it's not not in a weird way because it wasn't like that then. But I can remember picking her up and holding her yeah. and stuff. So, <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, it just seemed like one day I, I came to church and – uh, I seen her and I thought, wow, she's a beautiful girl. And that was once she became a woman. Right. Uh, she yeah. was, I think, 18 years old, just turned 18. And uh, we just kind of started talking and hit it off and went straight from there. I'm, I'm blessed that she stayed with me because the first <laughs> stayed date, with you. Yeah, the first date that we were on, actually, my ex-girlfriend called me and I talked to her for like oh, an hour on the date so goodness. so God had to be in it <laughs> he what had I'm to saying. be there yeah 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 definitely. did uh Pastor Johnny did he marry you yes he well, did yeah. he did up at the church mm-hmm. so yeah well that was great did did uh since the COVID thing was going on did you get to invite quite a few or not no just immediate family kind of the bridal party right. uh, it was just my my family of course dad brother sister and then her grandmother uh, and sister so yeah and then my grandparents mama and papa and uh, I think that was it yeah so. yeah now how old were you when you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ well uh, when I made a profession as a little kid uh, I remember a preacher came and preached at the church and uh, I felt God began to tug at my heart but I thought well I don't know what's going on you know right, I've never yeah. experienced that before well we got home and that preacher preached on heaven. And when we got to the house there, uh, at Papa's house, I was spending night with him. The Lord worked it out. And he said, I just can't imagine how beautiful heaven's going to be, telling me it's just a six, seven-year-old kid. And uh, God just poured it on me. I said, Papa, I don't know if I would go to heaven. 
Mm-hmm. I said, I just don't feel like I'm worthy enough uh, to go. And uh, I just felt heavy conviction. And Papa led me to the Lord that night. But I went astray a little bit uh, through high school uh, and, and got out in the world and dabbled in sin, as people say. And uh, uh, I, I realized God had woke me up in, in a way that, I mean, it's amazing how he worked it out. I was working for a drilling company, traveling and different things. And we was in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and uh, I got a phone call that my dad had had a heart attack. And I, that was a time where I was out drinking, partying, all those things. And uh, on my way back uh, from Chattanooga, I said, God, I know I've been living out in the world doing all these things, but I'm just surrendering my everything to you and giving it all. Uh, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I'm wrong. So it was right then. I was, I think, 22 years old that I really got serious. Mm -hmm. But like I've told people, the whole time that I was partying and out in the world, Mm -hmm. I wore that mask. So everybody thought that I was living the straight and narrow and doing right and mm-hmm. everything. Uh, but really, I just, I was a good faker, as, as people, as <laughs> people say. Faker. Yeah, yeah. I knew I knew how to shout. I knew how to pray. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would even get up and speak sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, get a little devotion there. Uh, but really, I, I wasn't right with God. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it, it took that for him to draw me in and, and no one would know better than yourself, for that's right. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. You, you began to preach. Now, uh, yeah. what age were you at that time? Uh, two years ago. I was 28. 28? Yeah. How, how did you know the Lord called you to preach? Uh, well, it's crazy because all my life, my brother was the one that was more talkative. He was the one that was outgoing and all this. And I was always quiet. I hated getting up in front of mm-hmm. people and uh, talking to people. So... Uh, I said, Moses. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. And I said, I'll never be a preacher. And right. I've always heard to never say never. Never so, say never. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, I, I started singing in church a little bit, and then I would get to exhorting and, and uh, saying a few words. Mm-hmm. And uh, I had a dream one night, uh, and it was the craziest dream. And I, I dreamed that an angel was pointing at a scripture and saying, knowledge. Well, I woke up the next morning, and I thought, I, I don't really go by dreams usually. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, dreams. Yeah. Are, but anyways, uh, I just had this heaviness on my heart. And uh, actually, I uh, was getting hired on out of Eastman, and they uh, never had anything wrong with my heart or anything like that in the past. And they found I had an irregular heartbeat, and mm-hmm. they wouldn't hire me on an Eastman. Huh. So, yeah, so... Uh, I believe that was God saying, it was right after then that I hit rock bottom, uh, said, I don't know what my life's, what's going to take place. And it just seemed like God used that place where I was down low, depressed, and said, push me in and said, this is what I want you to do is preach. So, wow. so ever since then, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been a blessing. I mean, been a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you've really helped Johnny out quite a bit, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah that, that that's wonderful that you know uh, uh, a grandpa and a grandson can work so well together. That is, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. How is now way of life? I know that uh, you know all this COVID stuff. Are you you guys having uh, services? Yeah, we are. We're doing Sunday mornings, eleven a.m. And then we just started back first this past week uh, doing five o'clock in the evening services, and then Wednesday Bible study. And what time? The Wednesday. Seven o'clock. Seven, seven o'clock. o'clock. And so the Sunday is at five o'clock, and well, you got morning service at eleven o'clock. Mm-hmm. Now, when they come, do they need to be wearing masks or anything, or it's, what? It's all up to them. Uh, we don't require it, but we say if you prefer to wear a mask, by all means, nobody's going to look at you funny or, or say anything to yeah. you for having a mask on. Uh, uh, but no, we don't require it. We do have. Uh, hand washing station mm-hmm. set up, hand sanitizing station, and we do have masks uh, if available if, right. if people need one. Uh, but uh, we've just we've actually been having some really good services. Wow, lately. Yeah, praise the Lord. Like, people hungry, aren't they? Yes, they yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's. I I was talking to my wife there the other night, and I said, you know, I've never thinking back about my life, I've never had a good day that has changed my life you know i mean you have good days all the time right. I mean, every day is a good day really but yeah. it's the tragic days and the sad days and the days that it seems like 
you lose somebody or you mm-hmm. uh, something happens, a sickness or something like that. It seems like those are the days where God really begins to move in your life, and those are the days that change you and make your character. Yeah. And I said, that's what America is going through is a tragic time. I mean, right. you see all the uh, uh, riots and different things going on, and uh, maybe this is God turning the things around, and maybe we can have a Bible revival. Before, Bible revival, before, before. and that's what we need. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do, definitely, definitely. Now, way of life, uh, since you're associate pastor, do you, you know, before all this COVID thing, did y'all have a program for young people? What are your programs there? Uh, at- uh, we have, yeah, we have a youth group. Uh, they're kind of in a rebuilding phase right now with uh, many of the youth graduating and going on to college. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we do have a youth program. Uh, if people are interested, have young uh, teenagers. Uh, we, we have a nursery available that they can use. Uh, but we do uh, tent revivals, truck meetings, stuff like that. And uh, I, I, we during the COVID, actually, we got to get the old gospel truck back out. Oh, Papa's, yeah. Yeah, Papa's yeah. ran it in the parade uh, for so many years, besides this year due to the, the pandemic. But uh, we got to get it back out, and it's just it brought back so many memories oh, yeah, of the old yeah. gospel truck just – and, and that's what I've said. I, it's it's a good way to reach people through, uh, mm-hmm. you know, because you see tents set up. And, right, and I right. love tent meetings as well. Oh, yeah, but, yeah. but you also see a tent set up to sell furniture or fireworks, mm-hmm. and people may not say. It doesn't pique the curiosity, but if you see an old truck parked out somewhere. Right. And somebody, the good old gospel ship. Yeah. <laughs> good yeah. old gospel yeah. truck. <laughs> you just see somebody uh, shucking the corn or shearing the right. sheep on, on top of a truck. You think. I wonder what's going on over there. And uh, so, not only do you preach in church, but you do you like going out in the, you know in the neighborhood and places and preaching uh, on the old gospel truck? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't had a chance to yet, but we have had a couple of tent meetings, mm-hmm. and uh, I do evangelist work as well. Wow, I good. go to different churches. Would Would you be av- available now to do such? Yes, yes. But uh, how could I get a hold of you? I have a Facebook page, uh, Caleb Kitzmiller Ministries, and then. Uh, of course, my phone number, uh, 423-367-1459, uh, which if, if they could look me up on Facebook. Yeah, that would be the – now yeah. spell your last name for them so <laughs> yeah. they'll know. Yeah, it's a mouthful. It's uh, K-I-T-Z-M-I-L-L-E-R. And so it's they got Miller. the Miller, and all they have to do is add that K-I-T-Z, add, and you got it. Right, add the kits to the Miller. Somebody <laughs> used to call me Kids Mill, Caleb Kids Mill. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Has, has Johnny been keeping you sort of busy here lately? Uh, yeah, yeah. We we like to have a good time uh, just cutting up. You know how Papa is. He's, he's he, happy. He always happy. Always <laughs> happy, yeah. That's what uh, I've heard many times. They say anytime they see Johnny, he's got a smile on yeah, his face. Yeah, he does. Uh, Mike Owens, actually, uh, the other day, my, my uncle just recently passed away, so definitely remember our family, my mama and papa in your prayers. Uh, but uh, Mike Owens was saying that he had more teeth than Jimmy Carter's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I believe old yeah. Mike's listening too. So. <laughs> yeah. He'll was, like that. <laughs> it's funny, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but it's a Mike's a blessing. I love Mike. Uh, well, but, you know, these are t- two good old boys, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, we're all getting a little older. Yeah. And, and it's good to see people like you ready to take, uh, you know, the shoes. Yeah. But, you know, it's getting a little difficult because a lot of the younger people are not, um, well, they're just not coming up to, you know, to fill in the shoes. Yeah, yeah, especially uh, it seems hard uh, the old-fashioned way. Right, uh, It's like the Jeremiah, old-fashioned way. Jeremiah said, uh, walk, uh, and he, the old paths, and they did not walk therein. Mm-hmm. Seek ye out the old paths. Right. And... Uh, I've always heard, which I, I'm not against the, the new uh, uh, worship and all that, but I do believe, uh, I, I just believe there's something in the old-fashioned way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, that people just aren't, it seems, aren't interested as much as they used to. But uh, it is good. Uh, I have a few young preacher friends, uh, and it is good to have them there just to know that there is still some uh, that's going to seek out the old paths. So. But yeah, now it, it, you know I know this is setting you off off guard a little bit. But it, what would you suggest or tell or encourage a young person and say they, 
you know, it is difficult for them to go to the old past because a lot of the others are not. So what word would you encourage them to say, hey, go for it? Uh, well, it's, we had a young girl at our church, and she said that she had a hard time uh, understanding the King James Bible. And I said, well, the way that I had to go about it is I've never played soccer in my life. I've never – I don't know anything about soccer. I was always in the sports but not <clears throat> soccer. So if I just went out and tried to play a full game of soccer right now, there's no way that I would be able oh, to. Oh, yeah, yeah. But if you take practice and you put time into it and, and start out with the easy stuff, I mean, first the first Johns and uh, the – Matthews and, and and those type books and just practice at it, mm-hmm. read it. And uh, it's the same way with the old fashioned worship. I mean Yeah. Some of those songs I would when I was younger I would I would think, What in the world? I don't I don't <laughs> But yeah. now once you've heard them and, and you listen <clears throat> to the words, that's the big thing is it's not about the music or anything, it's who we're magnifying and uh, mm-hmm. and that's right. Jesus Christ. And uh, the blood and how you can be redeemed by it, uh, but when you listen to those words, it just it's life changing. And uh, uh, but uh, but uh, it just takes it takes getting used to pretty much. I guess what you'd say. Well, it would, yeah. yeah. That that's a good good example. Yeah. It's like you know you take one sheet of paper, it's real thin. But you keep piling one on one on one. Eventually, you get a big stack. Oh yeah. And you know if if people do take the Bible a little bit of time, yeah, it, it'll come. But yeah, it's. It's, you know, it's, you know, faith is a superior, uh, we would say, knowledge or something rather than facts itself because it takes, you know, Jesus Christ to send you faith, you to have faith. So, yeah, yeah, and to understand that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know, to the secular world. No, it doesn't. No, it it doesn't. But but I did hear uh, uh, C.T. Townsend, he said, you almost have to have more faith to believe in the evolution uh, that we was one day a rock, and all of a sudden we decided we wanted, we wanted yeah. to get up, get up and walk. Uh, right, but, yeah. But, uh, you almost have to have more faith in that than you do to believe that there was a God that created all of right. this. So, yeah. yeah. It, you know, and the Bible's proved itself. It's been proved, and it's proved oh, itself, yeah. yeah, time after time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, I, I was watching, I don't remember the name of the movie, but it was about a, a baseball coach who was trying to – Put the Bible on trial, pretty much. Uh-huh. Put the Bible on trial, and um, he ended up listening to all the different resources and people that were non-Christians, even right. uh, that talked about Jesus Christ. and And I, I think it's amazing too. I've been kind of studying on the different religions and how they obtain salvation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I did a message on it here recently, and. Uh, Every single one of their Bibles and, and, and their religions mention the name of Jesus. They call him a prophet, but they still mention Jesus Christ. So that has some type of significance. To yeah, it. yeah. I mean, uh, but um, I forgot where I was. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that movie, they were trying to debunk Christianity, and he ended up getting one to the Lord. I mean, just wow. because Praise he, the Lord. Couldn't, yeah. he couldn't yeah. find any thing that went Couldn't against it that it. was false yeah so <laughs> praise the so lord whatever they brought up against it it was proved to be wrong news so i mean that's just amazing how it stood the test of time i mean let's tell them how to get to way of life a lot of people i you know a lot of us know that grew up in bloomingdale and kingsport but let's tell them how to get there because they 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 may want to join come up maybe visit you yeah uh if you're coming from Let's say Bristol, you can take 11W, uh, which is Stone Drive, just all the way through. Uh, probably the easiest way would be where Dunkin' Donuts is, and mm-hmm. then you'll take Bloomingdale. And then uh, just drive to where Gravelly is. Uh, there's a red light right there on Bloomingdale. You can make a left on the Gravelly and uh, go, what, two, one and a half, two miles mm-hmm. up through there. And... Uh, You'll see Independence Road on the right. Mm -hmm. Make a right, and it's up on the hill. Uh, If you're coming from Johnson City, say, you'll just get off Stone Drive exit. Uh, Is it exit two? Stone Drive? Maybe. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Maybe it's one of them. But (laughs) Stone Drive exit, it's easy to see. And just go to Duncan, make a left, and it'll take you 
the same way pretty much. Just go down and make another left. The church will be out on the right. Now, does Way of Life, uh, do you uh, uh, do Facebook with y'all services? Yes, yes, we do. Now, how would they go about uh, seeing that? Uh, just look up Way of Life Baptist Church, and uh, we have the videos of the church services. And uh, uh, So at 11 o'clock <laughs> Sunday, if they don't get to come, or maybe they work or whatever the case is, they could right. go on Facebook and watch you guys do it live. Go on is that correct? Facebook, look it up, uh, Way of Life Baptist, mm-hmm. uh, which mm-hmm. I share the videos a lot, so okay. they can also look up my name. And how about the the five o'clock in the evening? Uh, we we stream every service. Oh, we, okay. We do, so yeah. the five o'clock on Sunday and the seven o'clock on Wednesday. Yes. Yes. Wow, exactly. that's really good. Yeah. How yeah. about that? Because, you know, that Facebook has just, I think we brought salvation to Facebook, didn't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, especially during the uh, pandemic, it was awesome to be able to pull Facebook up. And usually you see uh, that Miss Imogene stumped her big toe and how she's yeah. complaining about it. But, but uh, pulling it up during the pandemic, you every single post that seemed was a different church service. So I, that just was such a blessing to be able to see how how much that an instrument that could be used for bad was being right. used for yeah, the glory of God. For sure. Yeah, so. Now, you know, you got married. Now, what does your wife think about you being a preacher or even a pastor? <laughs> well, that's the thing she said, too. She always said is she'll never marry a preacher because, oh. <laughs> because <laughs> she said that she didn't have the heart for it, but she's got a heart of gold. Well. And uh, she... It's it's so wonderful to have a wife that prays for oh, me every, every single amen. time that I, that I get up to preach. Yeah. She always will reach and grab my hand and say a prayer for me. Really? Well, that's uh, great. Yeah, that really yeah, and that, that's it's encouraging to have somebody there to support you and be there. Uh, but she she supports it one hundred percent. And I said, look at you, the one that wasn't going to marry a preacher. <laughs> just how just we, how you want. you know. I've heard some other preachers uh, say the same thing. Yeah, and, you know, we we all say you know things prematurely, or maybe we're not even thinking. Yeah, my wife doesn't have to pray for me. She just writes a sermon and hands them to me. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably going to run here and whip me in a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah uh, uh, th- that's something I said. I, I I drug my feet asking Caitlin, my wife, to marry me. And uh, she got to the point where she said, are we ever going to get married? And, oh, my. and I said, right now you want that ring, I said. But as soon as you get it, you're going to be wanting to give it right <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah. I said, and people would say, congratulations on your marriage. And I'd say, no, you mean condolences. <laughs> condolences. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is she listening? <laughs> You're going to get a <laughs> well, whoop I, I hope not. <laughs> but probably, but uh, I just won't go home this evening, I guess. Yeah. So, now, what's what's the plans for Way of Life? What have we got planned up? Because I know this COVID thing is yeah, holding us down a bit, you know. For the last two years, we've gotten out and got to have a tent revival. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this year, with the pandemic right. and, and everything going on, uh, haven't got to do that. But me and Papa were talking just uh, I think it was Saturday about how we would like to have a meeting here soon. So uh, we'll definitely be posting about it on Facebook and, and probably giving flyers out. So just stay tuned, I guess you would just say. Just stay tuned yeah, just for part two. <laughs> yeah, just stay tuned for part two. Well, uh, I know both of you are very energetic for the Lord. Or yeah. you would say the book of Revelation call it, calls it zeal. Yeah. So you're zealous, and that's that's wonderful. That really is. Yeah, yeah, it is. And uh, that's. It's amazing, Papa the other day was just at someone's house uh, he, that he was marrying, and uh, one, one the man that was getting married to the Lord right there, and uh, that's wow. something that serves you up. That, yeah. And that's something I've said that's sad is I think about my Papa's testimony and some of the preachers, Ed Blue, and uh, even I believe Mike, no, not Mike, uh, somebody was telling me a preacher around here, can't remember, slip mine, but uh, how they were one at the inside of their house it wasn't uh-huh. inside the four walls of a church right. and uh, it's sad to see that you don't hear that much anymore mm-hmm. uh, about people getting out in the community and door knocking and things wow, so yeah. so that's something that i've had a burden about bringing back is even going door to door which i know yeah, it, i yeah. know it's hard and we live in a time where people are sensitive and stuff mm-hmm. but but i believe the lord will shield us and, well yeah and they, guard us so yeah. so but yeah uh, uh, that is something as we're working on getting a visitation program and a revival coming up. So, 
you know, I think when it's uh, COVID things over, I think people will be really eager to jump out there. So, oh, you know, yeah. we yeah, we need to take advantage of that. Jump right out with that zeal we have. Don't let it die. Yeah. And really go strong for the Lord God. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something else uh, we were talking about with the truck. Uh-huh. Uh, if, if, Lord willing, we have a meeting this coming fall, uh, a lot of people won't go inside a church right now with the right, virus. Right, right. But it, with a truck, you can pull up in a car yeah. and listen right. sitting in the car so you don't yeah. have to engage. Well, you're welcome to pull it right here in front any day or any time you want well, to and just preach away. <laughs> well, well, you might see me pulling up. Uh, a, and they, I even got a, a extension cord there you can plug up if you oh, need to. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get it going on. You'll hear the uh, Dixie horn. and just Dixie know, horn. Just don't worry. <laughs> no, um, don't and but. sometimes the guys, you know, on the corner out here, they all set up, just pull right in there. And, well, and you know, it is you're right people especially now the covid thing and they mm-hmm. don't want some people still a little wary about it and they'll stay in the car but they won't get out so you know there you go it would yeah. work really good yeah it, it would uh that's why we're uh working on getting it going uh here in the next probably month or so well, well good we'll good praise yeah. Lord. yeah i miss the old white truck that, yeah it, yeah i that's see it in a fourth of july pray every every year yeah yeah and that's <laughs> That's something as uh, there was a few years back where uh, I can't remember what was going on at church, but uh, we we put it in the parade and uh, there wasn't many people that showed up and it was kind of disheartening and uh-huh. you, and we thought is it worth it? But then uh, we had our tent revival the next week and the singer that got up to sing he said it was a blessing to him that every year. He looked forward to the old gospel truck yeah, coming up yeah. in the tent uh, to hear that old preaching and uh, gospel singing. So, so it's the Lord worked it out and just encouraged us there. So, Amen. Yeah. Now, we once again we do want to tell them, uh, you know, how to get a hold of you in case yeah. you know if you need to fill in or whatever the case is. Yeah, uh, you can look me up on Facebook, Caleb K I T Z M I L L E R, Caleb Kitzmiller. Uh, ministries or just look my name up and uh, send me a message and I'll get back to whoever uh, well, and like I said uh, I, I enjoy getting to go out to different churches I was actually uh, preached at Mount Carmel Church in mm-hmm. Beach Creek uh, Pastor Terry Robertson uh, a woman was or a young woman was saved there the other wow night, praise so, the yeah. Lord yeah yeah so, yeah, so uh, that is really good yeah great praise the Lord yeah now and and to uh, let's tell the times that uh, way of life is having uh, services and uh, how they can see it on Facebook uh, yeah just get on Facebook way of life Baptist Church and uh, services Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Sunday evening, 5 p.m., and Wednesday's prayer meeting at 7 o'clock. So. Folks, uh, you can believe it or not, half hour's already well, gone. So, hate that, <laughs> We've been talking with the associate pastor, Caleb Kitzmiller of Way of Life Baptist Church. Caleb, thank you so much for being here with us today. It was a blessing. I'm glad I got to come and talk with you a little bit. Well, praise the Lord. Folks, for Caleb Kitzmiller and Community Talk, I'm Ron Gordon. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Ron Gordon and the Community Talk Show. 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 Please, if you have the voice, AM 1260, WMCH, Churchill. This program is a pre-recorded program.
and praise him in the new time with a joyful sound. Praise the Lord. This is Brother Freddie Redmond, Jr. We're so glad you decided to join us today. When you turned your radio dial to WMCH, 1260 AM, you became a participant of this ministry. I just want to begin by welcoming all of our listeners today. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with us. And uh, we're just going to uh, pray briefly, ask you to pray with us and pray for us. And I uh, want to request prayer for uh, Sister Tammy Shirks, a good friend of mine. We baptized her recently. She really loves the Lord. She's had a lot of health concerns with her liver, and she's had a lot. Of, she's been hospitalized quite a bit, and uh, she's had several surgeries. And uh, she's also going to have to have a hernia surgery. Uh, the doctor tells her, and so she called yesterday and asked for prayer. And so I'd like to ask you to help me to pray for her. And we know that there's a lot of needs and out there, and the Lord knows all of our needs. I have needs, and you do, and so. We'll just uh, ask for the Lord's help, and we'll pray for each need under the sound of our voice. King Jesus, you're God alone. Thank you for being so good and kind. Thank you for sparing us another day. Thank you for all your blessings upon us. Thank you, Lord. You loadeth us daily with benefits. Lord Jesus, we pray, O oh God, for every listener and every concern they have. We pray for every spiritual, physical, emotional, psychological, personal, individual, family, marital, financial needs, all types of needs out there, Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, that in faith the listeners, O oh Lord, would reach out and touch you, Lord, and receive what they have need of today. I pray, Lord Jesus, for our country and all the needs in our country. We pray, O oh Lord, about the upcoming election. We pray, O oh Lord, that you cause people to vote in a righteous manner. I pray, Lord Jesus, for your divine assistance today. I know I can do nothing without you. I ask for your help and your divine assistance. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, and amen. So we're going <clears> to <throat> share a few scriptures with you today. We're thinking about the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11 and verse number 3. The Bible says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And so uh, we, we it tells us here that through faith we understand. And, uh, of course, it mentions in particular that we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. But uh, there's actually quite a few things we understand by faith. And uh, it's not by a, a mental ascent that a man is going to approach to God. It's not with his high IQ or intelligence or academic learning that's going to help you to be able to approach to God. And uh, we see right here in the, the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 1, it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, verse 18, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Verse 19 says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Verse 20, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after it in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Verse 25 says, Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Verse 26, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. So uh, God doesn't have to operate in an orthodox manner. We can recall when the Lord spoke to Gideon and called him a mighty man of valor, and Gideon really didn't have a clue that he, he was a mighty man of valor. And Gideon already had a small army, much smaller than their enemy, but God whittled it down to even smaller than that. And he used such a small army that Gideon had to defeat a great, a great big army of the Midianites. So uh, that, you know, and it concludes in this first chapter, it says that, that in verse 29, uh, that no flesh should glory in his presence. You know, Gideon and his army, they knew that they didn't win that battle by the strength, the arm of the flesh and by the might of, the, of their, their own strength. But they knew that it was the Lord. 
verse 31 says that according as it is written he that glorieth let him glory in the Lord and so it's through faith that we understand that the things of God and it's it's not through high cues and intelligence levels the Bible said God hath hidden it from the wise and prudent and revealed it unto babes I recall when Apostle Paul was in Athens Greece on Mars Hill, our Areopagus there, that uh, he was talking to some of the most intelligent people on the planet. They were regarded as some of the most intelligent people on the planet. They were philosophers and Stoics. And, and uh, Paul was talking to them, and uh, their, their wisdom and their knowledge hadn't brought them to the c correct conclusion of faith. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, Through faith we understand. A lot of times folks are trying to approach or understand God with their natural senses. God's give you six senses to, to contact matter with, seeing and hearing and, and tasting and smelling. And, and some people speak of a sixth sense, a sense of knowing. But, you know, uh, it is, as it says right here in verse number 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says, But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And so, once again, it's through faith that we understand. We don't perceive God with our natural senses per se, and, uh, but uh, it's, it's through faith. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith, Romans 12 and 3. That's one thing it says. Apostle Paul said, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So I'm glad God, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And so when uh, we mix... Uh, the, our faith with God's word then it'll, there'll be a, a yielding from that and uh, it says in verse 10 but God hath revealed them 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10 God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of God verse 14 says the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God for they are foolishness unto him and recalling what we read in chapter number 1 right there God hath chosen the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Not only the, as God used the foolishness of preaching, it says God hath chosen, he hath chosen the foolish thing, the foolishness of preaching. And so the preaching that God uh, orchestrates and sends forth is perceived by people's natural carnal mind as foolishness. God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. As a matter of fact, when Paul was talking to all those smart guys in Acts chapter 17 at, at, uh, in Athens, Greece, that uh, they said he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods. Although they had built a temple to every false god that their carnal minds could concoct up, and just in case they had missed one, they built one to the unknown God, and Paul, being the great apologetic that he was, he took that and preached Christ to them. He preached the unknown God. He said, Him whom you ignorantly worship, declare I unto you. And he preached unto them the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He preached through them the resurrection through Jesus Christ. And they said that he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods. Told him that much, and Paul was told in one place that much learning had made him mad. And, uh, and so that's, that's the world's perception of what God does. I think about the, the, the demoniac of Gadara. There he was, and he wasn't fit company for anybody. He, kept, uh, he stayed in the graveyard, and he kept his clothes torn off of him, and, and he cut himself, and he was just in torment, and he had a legions of devils, thousands of devils in him. But he done something that I've seen a lot, that, I've, uh, that a lot of folks that profess to be Christians, I've never seen them do. When he saw Jesus a long way off, he fell down and worshipped him. You know, that's Psalm 95 and 6. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. And a lot of folk might not realize it, but the word praise in the Old Testament comes from ten separate words. And one of those words is to bow down or to even lie prostrate uh, and, and worship the Lord. And uh, there's ten different words, and I forget the Hebrew pronunciation, the most frequently appearing word praise in the Old Testament, if I'm pronouncing it correct in the Hebrew, was haleo, and it means to be beside oneself, to behave foolishly, to laud, and to praise vehemently. And so, and that, the word praise, every time you see it in between Psalm 145 and 150, and all those Psalms there, 
Uh, I, every, every one of those psalms begins with praise ye the Lord and concludes with praise ye the Lord. And, of course, the word praise is intermittently dispersed through all those psalms. But uh, the word haleo, translated praise, is the most frequently appearing word. There's ten words that's translated into the English word praise. and uh, But that's the most frequently appearing one. And it appears, if I counted correctly, 89 times in the Old Testament. And uh, I think if folk want to have scripturally proportional doctrine, that that would be the most frequently appearing one in their service. And you know, when the Lord began the New Testament church, as we have the record in Acts chapter number 2, on the day of Pentecost, what kind of carnal-minded accusations were flung at the followers of Jesus? They said, these men are drunk with new wine. Peter clarified the matter. He paralleled the event that had just transpired with Joel's prophecy. He said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. He said, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Upon my servants and my handmaidens will I pour out of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And so we understand that Acts 2 and 11 said they heard them speak the wonderful works of God in, in, in our languages. They heard them speak the wonderful works of God. And it enumerates at least 17 different languages that they heard native Galileans speaking in. And, uh, but I believe there were more languages than that because the Bible says, I believe it's in Acts 2 and 6, that there were devout men gathered there from every nation under heaven. And I believe there were more than 17 different nations on that planet in that day. And every nation under heaven was represented there on the day of Pentecost, as we have record in Acts chapter 2. And no less than 17 different languages are enumerated there as they were spoken by native Galileans. But those people were behaving in such a manner that those carnal-minded onlookers flung accusations others mocking said that's what they they were doing they were mocking they were mocking and they said these men are full of new wine and so that attitude is still on the planet today and people do mock and make fun and misassess what God is doing God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise God doesn't do it, things in a manner that would allow flesh to glory in his presence he does things in a manner that people will know that he done it and uh, just like when the Lord went to pick uh, uh, a king for Israel's second king, he didn't pick, uh, uh, Samuel was looking for the oldest brothers of Jesse, and he looked over all of Jesse's sons, and, uh, and he, everyone he come to, he said, this is not the one. He ended up choosing the little lad out there in, in, the, in the field with the sheep, little David, and that's the one who defeated Goliath, the Philistine giant. King Saul, what could he do? Him and all his men, we see in 1 Samuel chapter 17, they were dismayed and afraid. That's what they do. And Goliath coming out every morning and noon and evening, cursing them and their God, belittling them, humiliating them, and they couldn't do anything but be dismayed and afraid. But it wasn't any of David's older brothers, and, and Goliath wasn't going to be defeated by size or human strength. But he, as David told Goliath, you come to me with spears and swords, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. And so that's our strength. And the, the Bible says that the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so the Lord is our strength. Psalm 27 and 1, the Lord is my light and my WMC, salvation. Then it H. says the Churchill, Lord Tennessee. is the strength of my life. You know, and also in Acts chapter this program 17, is a pre recorded program. All the smart You're now guys invited there. to listen to the God is Light broadcast have our very with Brother Robbie Dockery. Address all correspondents to WMCH Radio, and, and PO Box 128, Church of Tennessee, the Zips 37642. And now, the God is Light broadcast with Brother Robbie Dockery. Head on head, our brother, it seems as though our people's trying to replace Brother Wayne, and that's something that's real. I'd rather with something that ain't real. Had their time to replace a man. I can boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And so that's a great statement to be able to make. And it looks like our time is, has come and gone, but uh, 
We're so glad to get to spend some time with you today. And truly, the Lord is the strength of our life, and uh, he, he is our light and our salvation. I like that Psalms 27 and verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And that's, that's just a basically what Apostle Paul was saying in Hebrews 13. Uh, I can boldly say the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And, and Paul suffered many things at the hands of men. He was beaten three times times in a, a, a kind of beatings that would take a lot of people's life but he still had an integrity and he had an intact vision of Jesus Christ and it behooves us all to have that and to maintain that until next time we meet this is brother Freddie Redman Jr. saying God bless you this program is a pre-recorded program you're now invited to listen to the God is Light broadcast with Brother Robbie Dockery. Address all correspondence to WMCH Radio, P.O. Box 128, Churchill, Tennessee, the zip is 37642. And now, the God is Light broadcast with Brother Robbie Dockery. Here in our land, our brother, it seems as though our people's trying to replace Brother Wayne. I meant something that's real. Our brother with something that ain't real. And they're trying to replace, amen. And that old time worship in the power and the, and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit of God. I was something that's fake. I was something that's just a show. I but brother, you can have all the flashing lights. I mean, you can have all the loud music, but brother, it ain't in the show. It ain't in the flesh. You can't replace that. The real thing with something fake. Brother, you can't replace. I mean, that heaven, amen. I sent a man worship from God. That heaven sent spirit from God. The Bible said that one day, they're all gathered together. And after Jesus had died, and brother, after he'd risen, and there come a day that set there at me and the Bible said Jesus and then come into the room and amen he looked at him there that day and he told Thomas I just put your hands and then you my wounds I touch his hands and put your hand into my side I you see that man that could have faked and then they could have faked his body I've been taken away and they could have come and got it and brother took it somewhere else and but there was no denying and the, 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 the man that died and the man that was buried I was there with them that day I, you see brother you can't I, you can't replace this I was something from the world I, you see people they're chasing drugs and they're chasing alcohol I'm trying to find a good feeling I'm trying to find that high I, but brother I, nothing's ever made me feel I like some of the Lord made me feel I, nothing's ever given me I, the joy that saved and God has given me and nothing that the devil's ever put before me has ever been as good and it all might not be good English but it gets gooder and gooder all the time and then serving Jesus it gets better all the time and you can't replace it with the world and you can't replace it, amen I like what the sister said and you can listen to it on amen on the radio and you can listen to it on your Facebook and that brother it just ain't the same. There ain't no replacement for being down at the house of God. You can't get it out yonder. You can't find it in the bottle. And you can't find it on the internet. But where you gonna find it at? I'm mean, right down here at the house of God. David said I was glad when they said unto me, I let us go down to the house of the Lord. Oh, David said, a day in my courts has been than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'd rather be right here in the house of God than out there chasing some replacement, out there under chasing something else. I'd rather I've got the real thing and why in the world I would have wanted anything else. Amen. You can't beat the real thing. Amen. Amen. How do you know he's real? He lives down in my soul. 
Amen. How do you know it's real? I brother, he changed, he changed me. Amen, he saved me. He picked me up out of my sin. I know it's real tonight. And brother, I can't replace it with a feeling. I can't replace it with what the world has. I but mean, oh, I just want, I'm more of the real thing. I just want more of what God's given us tonight. And the Bible said, and then by Rehoboam was, and amen, he let the king of Egypt come in. And he took, amen, away the gold. He took away them golden shields. I but you know what we're doing tonight? I'm a lot of them in the house of God. I've been letting the world come in and take away the real thing. I've been letting the devil come in and take away the real thing. I brother, we've got some fine worship. I we've got some fame and some fake thing. I bet people come in and bow down their knees. I mean get on their knees. I lift up their hands. I bet God's out from a hundred miles away. I bet the Bible said I bet these people drawn out of me at the mouth. I mean and with the lips. I bet the heart is far from me. I bet some that's like that right now. I you might be in here tonight like that right now. I but I want you to know one thing. I bet you can't replace the real thing. I bet something that ain't real. How you can't replace that that's inside of me. How it's something that's fake. I brother, I've tasted the goodness of God. I pray I've tasted the power of God. And brother, oh, I don't want the world no more. I mean, in the morning when I rise, I just give me Jesus. I when I lay my head down at night, I just give me Jesus. I brother, when it comes down out of the time for me to cross the river, and brother, it's all over with. Who do I want on my side? I don't want some fake thing. I don't want some religion. I but I want the amen of the God that give me salvation. I right there with me. Oh, I want him right there. Amen. I mean, you can't beat the real thing. And fake stuff not be good enough to live by. I but mean, brother, it ain't good enough for me to die by. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Read down, let him come in. Take him on shields. I take him golden shields that Solomon made. He said, "Why? Well, we'll just make us some cheaper ones." Yeah. Amen. Ain't that the way the world is right now? Amen. They just make some. Amen. As long as they make it cheap. Amen, ain't nothing made to last no more. Amen, that's why people ain't in the house of God longer than two weeks. Amen, they don't get something that's real. How they get something to, make, to pat them on the back? Amen, tell them everything's okay. And brother, tell them they made things right. How they don't get nothing that changes them. How they don't get nothing that's good. And the Bible said that a sower, how brother went forth to sow. And some of that seed, how brother it fell down among, among the stones. And it said it took no root. And for a little while, and then they endured until the trials arrive. I brother come into their heart. And then they right back out under again. I brother, you can't you can't replace a real thing. I was something out there among the stones. It's got to get down the good ground. It's got to get down there. I brother where it can get water. I and mean, then oh, what are you talking about, preacher? I Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And he sat down on the well. I one day and told that woman. He said, if you'd ask of me for water, I'd give you living water, and you'd never thirst again. I would better wait. I might get thirsty and in my physical body, but I ain't gonna be thirsty in my spiritualness and my spirituality. I ain't gonna be thirsty in the inward man. Oh, you can't beat the real thing. I watch the real thing do. It gives me drink. I burn in a burn land. It gives me food. And amen in the midst of a drought. I'm in the midst of a man. I'm in a pandemic. I believe it keeps me well. I believe a thing. I believe it's the best thing I've been all I've ever known. And I want the world to have what I got. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want the whole world have what have we got here. Amen. Hey, they say Coke, that's before my time, but you say, Amen, the real thing. Amen, that's what this is. Amen. Amen, the world don't want that jumping around. The world don't want them to shout. But you can't replace what's real. Amen, with something that ain't. 
I mean, you can't, you can't replace her. I mean, all oh, the Bible said that God, I mean, is the spirit. And they that worship him, I must worship him in spirit and in truth. I know if we're gonna worship God, I and mean, then we've got to worship him, I brother in spirit, I mean, and in truth. I so you know what we do? I mean, man, you know how you do that? I well, you can't be a hypocrite and worship him in truth. And brother, how do you worship him in spirit? I well, brother, you lose your dignity and you don't worry about what people think. I but you just lift up them holy hands and you say, God, I'm gonna praise you for what you've done in my life. I'm an old real born God. I won't just replace them golden shields. I'm mean, with brazen shields. I but oh, everybody come down the house of God. I brother Wayne, I bet they had to think. I what's happened to that glitter? I watch happen to them pretty shields. I can know what everybody thinks about the church. I watch happen to them that shouted. What's happened to the church as alive? I watch happen after them that used to live right. i Monday through Saturday. I now we got a bunch of people. I they go down the house of God. I but they don't live it through the week. I brother, that ain't the real thing. And you'll never pass it over on God. And you won't get it by I with the rest of the world either. Amen. You can't meet the real thing. Amen. I can just see old Peter out there. Amen, old Peter was a fisherman. And the Bible said that one day Jesus, amen, come out there where Peter was. Amen, amen, there he was in the boat. Amen. There they were, they told, I bet you old Peter, I can just see him sitting around the fire. Amen, telling them about how good the fishing was. I tell them about how good that amen. I, amen, oh boys, I bet you could have said, there ain't nothing like it. And when you begin to take up that net, amen, you feel amen, you know that you got a good catch in there. I bet you Peter said, I've never known anything like that. Amen, that's what Peter did for a living. I no doubt he loved it. I bet amen, no doubt he enjoyed what he did. I bet amen, one day he met a man. I bet changed a managed mind on the best thing that ever happened to him. I can just see Peter now. I was saying, boys, I used to think it was good. I when I would take up that net, and there'd be I met a good catch of fish in there. He said, but let me tell you about that Nazarite, that Nazarene man. I let me tell you about that long Galilean. I bet you old Peter could have sat back. And he said, now I say, I'm the best thing that ever happened to me. I was when the fish were men. I come and call me. I brother, he got me in his net one day. Ain't you glad he caught you? Ain't you glad he come to where you was? I want you, amen, if you got the real thing tonight, how you better thank God for it and praise him that you got the real thing. I brother, it ain't everybody coming and going. That's got the real thing. I but oh, some people call me noisy. I belong to a noisy crew. I shout when I get happy. I, you, know, you know who does that? I've them Christians. That's got the real thing. Amen. amen. amen Hallelujah. Let the world call you crazy. Yeah. Amen, but we got the real thing. Amen, hallelujah. How Peter was. Amen, no, never man speak like this man. Amen, oh, I, I, I believe I liked old Peter. Amen, he's just a bold man, totally like he saw it. Amen, there one day they was. And they said, now Peter, we're gonna let you go. You and John down here, amen, you're causing uproar in this city. Amen, you've done, amen, this man's been healed. We don't know how you did it. Amen, and these people, amen, you've turned them all, this man named Jesus. Amen, you've caused an uproar. Amen, now Peter said that, amen, that these blemishes and these spots, they count it pleasure to ride in the daytime. Amen, that's the world we're living right now. He said they think it's strange that they don't run to your excess of right. Amen, you know why we don't do what they're doing? Because we got something they ain't got. Amen, they might proclaim the Lord. Lord, and they might say they're right with God. I bet brother them that's right with the Lord. I them that's not the real thing. I brother you can tell gold. I from them old brazen shields any day. I mean you can tell who's got it. And you know who ain't got it. I they might put on a show for a little while. I but the Bible said, be sure. And your sins, I they'll find you out. Amen. We're gonna let you go, Peter. But don't you mention the name of Jesus. Yeah. You've been listening to the God is Light broadcast with Brother Robbie Dockery. Address all correspondence to WMCH Radio, P.O. Box 128, Churchill, Tennessee, the zip is 37642. The Voice, AM 1260, WMCH, Churchill.
The time is now 12.30. The current temperature, 78 degrees. Welcome to the Old Fashioned Recipes in the Old Fashioned Way on WMCH AM 1260 with Miranda Nottingham and Mary Gordon and Linda Jones, a.k.a. Dottie. And if you would like to send us a recipe to share with the other listeners with your